This simple technique will help transform your projects and really take them up a level. Not only this, but I'm going to show you three different ways you can do it and just how easy it actually is. I'm talking about the effect for 3D to help add an element of depth to your scene. So let's get to it. First, I'm going to show you how I made this cube and it's actually a really simple technique. So the first thing we need to do is create a square in our scene. So I'm just going to go up to my shape tool up here, my rectangle tool, click that. I'm going to hold Control and Shift to draw from the center and create a nice even box. I'm going to press Control, Alt and Home to center my anchor point and then just Control and Home to center that to my comp. I'm going to press U twice really fast on my shape layer here in the timeline and that'll just bring up my size properties. And I'm just going to set my rectangle to about 500. So now we obviously only have one side to this square and we actually need another five because this is kind of like making a real cube. So the first thing I'm just going to do is rename this layer and just call it one. And if like me, you don't have the switches for turning 3D on, you can go down to this toggle switches slash modes button and it'll bring up these other parameters. So I'm going to turn on 3D on this layer. And the first thing I want to do is change my anchor point. So my anchor point on this layer is actually out. So I'm going to zero this out. Then I'm going to press U really fast twice again on my rectangle to bring up its contents. And you'll notice our rectangle position is actually out. So I'm just going to change those to zero. So now we're back centered, but having these zeroed numbers is so much easier to work with. So on my anchor point, I'm going to press A to bring that up. And on the Z, I want to change the depth to be half of our rectangle size. So we set our rectangle size to be uh, 500. So I'm just going to change that to 250. Now we could link this up with expressions if we wanted to, but for ease, I'm just going to type in the value. Now you'll notice in my 3D mode, it actually says Cinema 4D here, and I don't want that. I want to change that to Classic 3D for this one. And I'm just going to go to where it says one view and change it to two views. So I have my top and my front. It's just going to make it easier for positioning these rectangles. So I'm going to dupe this up once by pressing Control and D. Then I'm going to press R to bring up my rotation properties. And on my X, I'm just going to type in 90. And now we have the top. And I'm going to dupe that again. And I'm going to do minus 90. And that will give us uh, the bottom. And then I'm going to dupe that again. And this time on the X, uh, that wants to be zero. And... 90 on the Y and then we want to do that again and change that to minus 90 on the Y and now we're just missing the uh, back one so I'm just going to dupe the, the base one and change the Y rotation to 180 and that'll give us the back so I'm going to select all of these for you to uh, bring those down and collapse them all and I'm going to link all of these to a null controller so I'm going to go layer new and null object and I'm just going to call this cube control I'm going to select all of these layers and just bring the parent to the cube and make the cube a 3D layer as well. Now, if we press R to bring up our rotation, we can animate this around and we have a full 3D box. Now, I should mention, if you plan on adding layer styles to these layers, you will have to do some tweaking if you just have rotations on these cubes. As you'll notice on my original one, my layers are kind of dispersed a bit differently and I have them trim off. And that's because you'll get this kind of see-through effect uh, happening if you don't, just where the layer styles are interacting. So you'll see the top uh, is now visible uh, where really we don't want it to be. And it causes this kind of see-through look almost, just the way the layer gradients are hitting. Um, so I would recommend you just kind of go through and trim your layers accordingly to uh, give you that look that the cube is actually fully whole and fully solid. However, if you're not using layer styles, you don't need to worry about that. It's absolutely fine. Now, the next method does require a bit more work, but you can really tune it to what you need. And I'm a big fan of this one. It's how I made this loop and also this one as well. Uh, and we're going to be manipulating shape layers to do this. So I'm going to go ahead and make uh, the one that I made for, for this video. So I'm going to go ahead and create a rectangle. And this is just going to serve as a base to our uh, to our cylinder. So I'm just going to control alt home that to center my anchor point. Bring that to position and I'll call that cylinder base. And then I'll create a ellipse by going up to the shape tool up here. And I'm just going to add an ellipse to this as well. Now, that kind of gives us the top, uh, something around there. Now, I'm going to press U really fast twice on this base. I'm just going to even out these numbers uh, so we have uh, an actual square to work with. 
and then I can set my uh, cylinder top to be 600 uh, pixels as well. So let's set that to 600 by 600. And then if I unlink this value here, that means uh, these values are no longer attached. I can just change my X value, which is the first one, to be 600 as well. And now I have my cylinder. Uh, but the way to get this to work, and I'll just make this a different color so we can really see what's going on, is we need to animate our path properties, which is super simple. So I'm going to go to my cylinder top and press U really fast twice. And really, we could just animate this size because it is a circle object. If it's something more hand-drawn, you may need to go in and do this manually. But I'll just go ahead and keyframe my size parameter on this. And I'll press the stopwatch to create a keyframe. I'll move over to maybe around two seconds. And then on the y-axis, I'm just going to set this to about two. I don't want it complete zero. Um, but what you'll see happen is now our position wasn't actually correct because it's not lining up with the top. So that means my uh, center wasn't actually centered to the uh, cylinder, as you can see. So I'm just going to bring this up and just center that by bringing these middle points up to the top. And I just press T to get my opacity up here, and I'll set that back to 100. And now we have the illusion that our camera is kind of tilting up over this object. And it's super simple to do but it really gives that a uh, nice illusion of depth. So you can just add a bit of easing to this and then you get this nice movement as though you're kind of got some 3D in your scene. And then obviously, just because it's 2D layers, you can add all your layer styles to this as you would normally with no issues and just create a really nice animation by the end of it. So for the last method of this technique, we will actually be creating a fully 3D object that you can use in After Effects using the Cinema 4D renderer. However, the problem with this is you can't use track mats and layer styles, but you'll notice my original one had layer styles. So I'm going to show you a little hack that we can do to add those to our 3D layers. So first off, I'm going to go ahead and create a cylinder shape. So I'll go ahead and create an ellipse and I'll just do this in the center and I'll press Control Alt on home and then Control home to center that. Press you really fast on this and I'll just size that to 500 and I'll rename this to cylinder. On this ellipse path, I'm gonna select it and press Control and D, and I'm gonna to go to my properties in my ellipse path and just change this to 400. Maybe we'll go down to 350 just to get a nice uh, kind of tube look. And I'm gonna select the top of the contents here, go to add, and we will add a merge paths. In our merge paths, we'll go down and change this to exclude intersections, and that'll just cut out the middle piece for us. Now, what we want to do is add all of these to a group. So I'm going to go to add and group, and bring this to the top, select everything below, and bring this up to the top here. And we want to turn on 3D for this layer as well. So I'll turn on 3D and make sure you're using the Cinema 4D renderer for this one. Now what this will do is it will give you some new options such as geometry options and material options. We just want the geometry option. So I'm gonna bring this down and we now have the ability of an extrusion depth. So I'm gonna set this to 80. And you'll notice if I bring up my rotation by pressing R on my keyboard, and begin to rotate this, we actually have a full 3D object, which if that's all you're after, that's great. You can end the tutorial here. But if you're wanting layer styles in this, you'll notice you can't actually do it with the Cinema 4D renderer active. So if I try to add a gradient overlay, it does nothing because layer styles don't work in the Cinema 4D renderer, the same as track mats don't. So I'm going to go ahead and delete that, and I'll show you the little workaround that we can do to be able to do this. If we go to our contents and select our group, you'll notice if we press the add button, we have a few more options now. And we can change the color of the front, side, and back, and we have some bevel options as well. Now, to our side, I'm going to add a color, and to the back, I'm also going to add a color. For my side color, I'm going to change it to bright green. And for my back color, I'm going to change this to bright blue. This is going to make it easier to separate our colors. Now, what you will need to do is actually animate your 3D within a pre-comp. So I'm going to go ahead and just animate this X rotation over two seconds, maybe to do a 180 degree spin. So I'm going to go ahead and pre-compose this layer by pressing Control, Shift, and C. And I'll just call this cylinder. Now, to be able to add layer styles to each side of this and treat it individually, say we wanted the side a different color to the back and the front a different color to the back as well, we actually need to separate these into layers. So I'm going to select this comp and dupe it three times. 
And then on my top one, I'll call this cylinder face. We'll call this second one cylinder side. And the bottom one can be cylinder back. So to be able to get each separate layer on its own, we need to add an effect called color key. So I'll go up to my uh, effects here and change this to color key. I'll just drag this linear color key on. And I'm just going to solo this top layer to give us our face. So you'll notice it's already defaulted to blue and ours isn't far off. So I'll key color and just select that blue. And then we want to dupe this effect by pressing Ctrl and D on it. And then I'm actually going to select the green as the next color. Just clicking the eyedropper and then selecting on your screen. And now we just have this red face, which is perfect. I'm going to copy both of these and paste that to my next layer. I'll unsolo that. And now we want our side. So I'll just solo the side, paste on these. And we can change our green to a red this time. And now we just have the side. And then we can unsolo that. And now paste these to our back layer. And this time we just want the blue. So I'll just change the first color from blue to red. And if we solo that, we now just have the back layer when it comes around. So obviously all together we have each side on its own. And now because these are just 2D pre-comps, we can actually add layer styles to this. So if we go to right click, layer styles and gradient overlay. And this is on the back. So I'll just need to flip around. And now we have the opportunity to add the gradients as you wish. And if you want to learn how to create awesome layer styles like this, you can go ahead and watch this video next.